Looks good. Yeah. Recording? Yeah. What's up guys? Welcome to Supercars of London and my AMG GTS. This is the follow-on video of living with an AMG. So I bought this car now in March 2016. So I feel like not only have I got miles under my belt, I've also learned a lot about this car. And there are a few questions that I've seen on YouTube comments and on social media that I really want to answer in this video. It's kind of like the done thing now on my Audi R8. I did a running cost video on the Lamborghini. I did a running cost video. I think I did one on my A1 as well because it's just one of those questions that is actually really interesting on cars that like even I watch running cost videos on cars that I don't own because it's just an interesting thing so I want to talk about this car as an AMG GTS I also want to talk about this specific example with the Rentec bits the wrap and everything else and for the first time I think on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, I'm gonna try and reopen the bonnet. I think I know where the lever is. So um, I think, actually let's do that first way. So come, come and, uh, basically the Mercedes booklet tells you that the lever is underneath the steering wheel. But what I didn't realize when I was reading the booklet is the steering wheel is on the left hand side of the car because it's uh, built in Germany. So I think it's somewhere down here. <laughs> I think I've just done it. Does it just lift up? Nope. The... Ta-da! Does it just stay up? Just stays up. There is the four litre by turbo handcrafted by Lars someone. Nice signature. And behind here, this is where the Rentec stuff begins. So we've got the downpipes, the secondary cat delete, and um, I think underneath here are the blow off valves. So every time I lift off, you hear the tsh, that is right there. That's pretty cool. How cool does that look? It looks like a transformer. I'm gonna take a quick picture. It's not very professional whilst we're shooting a YouTube video, but I need to take a picture of this. Oh, it looks so cool. Right, okay, now on with the video. So the AMG GTS starts at around 105,000 pounds. This is the S model 503 brake horsepower. Once you put options on this car, it can easily creep over 120,000 pounds. And from the launch video that I did when I picked it up from Sun Sky in March, I told you that there was a hell of a lot of options on this car. It's got three driving packages. It's got the interior package. It's got the premium package. It's got a lot of stuff on this car. The customer that spec this car, spec'd it to 127,000 pounds, which was last September. This is a 65 plate. So it's the second half of 2015 and very early part of 2016. So this car new out of Mercedes, 127,000 pounds. And as I run through various bits and pieces, we can add to that tally and then take it off on the end when it comes down to the depreciation. Because as I mentioned, this car is only a year old, it is still within the Mercedes manufacturer's warranty, meaning that even if something went wrong with the car, I could still take it back to Mercedes and it would get repaired, it would get looked at totally free of charge, which is one of the best things about warranty on uh, new cars and why I wanted to go towards the Mercedes AMG GTS and get out the Lamborghini because the Lamborghini was out of warranty. So this car is still in warranty and there has been absolutely nothing it has not gone back to Mercedes since I picked it up nothing has gone wrong um, so I mean this could be a very very quick running costs video because it costs 75 quid to fill up and it goes for about 400 miles I think my average MPG from picking this car up and doing 10,000 miles one of the main reasons that I'm doing this video is because I've just ticked over 10,000 miles so it's a 10,000 mile celebration video my average MPG is 21.5 MPG there or thereabouts so it's a very very fuel efficient car even with the Rentec bits so as I've done in previous with the running cost of the R8 and the Lamborghini petrol 75 quid for a full tank moving on to the tires now they can be very expensive depending on how many times you go to the airfield in one week um, but Michelin Pilot Super Sports are a standard on the car so you need to replace them uh, when they start wearing out because you basically do not want to have less than 100% grip in this car because it is very, very hairy. You are looking at around 300 pounds per front tire and around 450 to 500 pound per rear. So that comes out at around 1500 quid for a full set of brand new tires. Uh, Michelin Pilot Supersports, you kind of got to get them. 
The one surprise for me on this car is insurance. Four litre by turbo. My insurance on the Lamborghini, which was a 5.2 litre V10, was around 2,000 pounds for the entire year, which is a very good price. I was expecting this to be cheaper. It's not. My insurance on this car is near, nearly 4,000 pounds. So it's nearly double, which it literally, my brain exploded when I found that out. So even though the running costs of this car day in, day out, aren't actually that expensive compared to some of its competitors and compared to the cars that I've previously owned, the biggest expense comes right underneath here, the Rentec bits. Now, myself and Rentec, we had a fantastic partnership and um, I got a very good deal on the Rentec upgrade. It's the R1 package. And what that means is it gives you the downpipes, it gives you the Rentec remap, it gives you the blow off valves, and um, also gives you the 200 cell sports cat. So it's not decatted, it is totally legal when this car has to go through an MOT. But what it does do is it gives me 625 brake horsepower as opposed to the stock 503, and it gives me 815 Newton meters of torque. Now that is absolutely phenomenal and mind blowing statistics in this car. So much so that it is faster than the AMG GTR that isn't out yet. So this car has got more power and more torque than the AMG GTR. Yes, I know that car is going to be a little bit more refined for the track. This is an absolute animal. And even though the prices haven't really been discussed on the AMG GTR, if you were to go to Rentec and pay full price for the R1 package, you were looking at around nine and a half thousand dollars, which equates to around six and a half late 6,000s in British pounds. So you take this car at 127,000 pounds from factory and you pay an extra 6,000 pounds, you can have an AMG GTR beating AMG GTS. It's a bit of a sleeper. I quite like the fact, now that I'm not gonna get the body kit from Rentec, I quite like the fact that it looks quite standard, it looks quite stock, but it can pretty much finish everything off the lights on the road. It is an absolute animal, and totally, totally transforms the car from stock. Okay, one question that I feel is asked so much is the price of a wrap. Now I go to Dub Customs to get my cars wrapped and I'm literally about 10 minutes away at the moment. And this car has got quite a unique wrap to it. It might look matte gray underneath the gray clouds, but actually underneath this matte clear film, is black chrome which is a very expensive material to have on the car to try and summarize wrap prices you're looking at around 20 meters of material to cover the car and to wrap all of the bits and pieces and then not only that if you're looking at a standard gloss finish it could be around 20 25 pounds per meter if you're looking at metallics or satins probably looking at around 35 40 pounds per meter and if you're looking at chromes chromes are like as expensive as like 90 pounds per meter times that by 20 it's bloody expensive. And the thing with the fact that this is black chrome underneath, you pay for the 20 meters of black chrome, but then you also pay for 20 meters of clear satin. So you're basically buying two cars worth of material, and then you're basically wrapping the car twice. So this is a very, very special wrap. And without the help of Avery, who are manufacturers of vinyl, I wouldn't have been able to do this this wrap, um, which is probably why you don't see it that much. Dub Customs actually priced up the material of 25 meters of black chrome and 25 meters of satin clear, and then obviously laminating them together. It would cost around three and a half thousand pounds just for the material. Probably not the best example, but I'll try and put some overlay clips of what this car actually looks like in proper sunlight. Wrap wise, you can go sort of quite cheap and get the gloss colors, which still look absolutely fantastic. And the way that the wraps of vinyls are coming along in terms of reflections, it is very, very good. My car was True Blood before, which was a metallic, so it was a lot cheaper than satin black chrome. But I wanted something unique. I wanted something spaceshipy that would do the Rentec upgrade justice. One more question that I want to touch upon is, every single day, I reckon I'm sent around 100 messages of pictures of AMG GTSs with different types of wide body kits. Now wide body kits look absolutely fantastic. They kind of ruin the handling and kind of ruin the livability of, of, of certain vehicles. Um, and that's one thing that I've learned over the last two years that wide body kits have become a lot more popular. I've watched a Liberty Walk Lamborghini Aventador get built. One of the coolest looking cars ever, but can you actually live with that car? It's quite difficult to do so. But I wanted to talk about what is the real cost of putting a wide body kit 
on an AMG GTS. So if you're looking at Pryor Design, Mansory, Wald, and those sorts of manufacturers that build wide body kits for these cars, first of all, you have to cut the wheel arches. So if you want to revert this back to stock, you're going to have to go to Mercedes and buy new body panels, which is a very, very expensive activity. So straight off the bat, you're probably looking at around £4,000 to £6,000 just on extra bo body kits if you're going to revert it back to stock. If you're not, then you're going to be looking at around £20,000, massive ballpark figure, between £15,000 and £30,000 to get the body kit. Then you have to pay someone to actually cut that car up and then fit the body kit. So you're looking at two weeks worth and around £30,000 worth of investment on that car and you're not gonna see a single penny of that in appreciation. You're not adding value to the car. In fact, you're making it even more niche that most people won't wanna own a car that's already got a body kit because if they want to revert that back to stock, it's gonna to have to come out of their pocket. So in my eyes, as cool as wide body kit is, and I absolutely love looking at them, I love watching them get built, I love filming them. I haven't won the lottery, so unfortunately I don't have that sort of money sitting around in a bank account. If I did, I'd probably invest it into something like property. But wide body kits, as fantastic as they look and as cool as they look, unfortunately, the finances and logic behind it, I, I, just, I just don't see the sense in it. If ever I put a wide body kit on a car, I've won the lottery. If we're gonna talk about the depreciation of the car as sort of one final thing, because again, that is a massive, massive cost on some of these cars. This car is now a year old and it has done 10,000 miles. So I look on Auto Trader pretty much every day at the market. I look at what new cars have been added to the Auto Trader AMG GTS list. I look at their specs, I look at their year, I look at their mileage. And I would say this car stock without the Rentec bit and the wrap is probably worth around 105,000 pounds. List price was 127 when it was new. I didn't pay that because someone ordered this car, drove it for 400 miles, and actually, the story behind it, he ordered the car thinking it was four-wheel drive. He was a massive Porsche fan and a massive Porsche owner. He owned pretty much every single 911 and thought this was four-wheel drive until he drove it, realized it was two-wheel drive and sold it with 400 miles on the clock. So he lost a hell of a lot of money. So I think this car is worth around 105,000 pounds. Then you take into consideration the wrap and also the Rentec tune, I reckon this car is probably worth around 110, 112,000 pounds. I think it's the only one in the UK with the Rentec tune. It's definitely the only one in the UK with this wrap. So it's a unique car underneath the wrap. I know a lot of people out there probably are a little bit freaked out buying cars that have been wrapped because the paint might be a little bit dodgy. It's only done 400 miles in the paint. Every single mile since then has been driven with a True Blood wrap or the Satin Black wrap. So it's, uh, it's pretty sort of, pretty bang on from factory, almost new. I've covered the general day to day, I've covered the upgrades, I've covered the wrap, I've covered what it would cost if you wanted to put a wide body kit on this car, and I've talked about the depreciation as well. And that is that, that is a sort of the best summary of running costs and how much that car costs to run every single day with the upgrade and with the wrap and the modifications and everything like that. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and found it a little bit informative. Maybe you've learned something and if you are looking at AMG GTSs, like first of all, they're one of the best cars in the category. And second of all, this one behind me is definitely one of the best cars in the category. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you very soon. Let me know in the comment box on what you want to see next from the AMG GTS. What do you want me to do with that car? Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Cheers guys.